don't hate the player, hate the game. It's a saying that's been around for a while and as much as I hear it, I never quite understand its point. I mean, doesn't the power of a game reside in the players playing the game? I mean, where is the power in a game if there are no players to play it? That's my uh, rebuttal to that little ditty. I mean, if there is a game and it's, you know, it's expenses are such that more than half of the world's population are suffering as a result of that game, and the ecosystem is suffering as a result of that game, then really, sure, the game is at fault, and the rules of the game only favor a few, but spoils the big picture overall in reality. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't really matter about that game and its rules that go against nature and the well-being of everything if people didn't play it in the first place. So I do say, hate the player, hate the game. I mean, people on you know welfare, concession and Centrelink and what have you, taking the taxpayers' money, cop a lot of crap from from the taxpayers, from the workers, from the players of the game. And really, you know, it's really relative to the kind of logic one is using. I could just as easily say to all of the people that point down with their finger and their nose is tilted up, judging those that choose to let their hair grow out and dress the way they want and not work the nine till five and not in some way sell their soul and not compromise on their their vision of that the way they should be living their life and their vision and their dream that they're living you know they look down on these people and they judge them for not playing playing the same game and for not playing you know by the rules which most people the majority or normal people choose to play by the normal is relative to to consensus and it's really a popularity contest the winner of popularity contests aren't always good you know people or whatever it is that wins doesn't mean it is necessarily worthy it just means that there is a perceived value there by a lot of people for whatever reason people perceive value in things even though it's bad for them and destroys them and it's toxic for them a lot of people see value in drinking alcohol on the weekend, you know, mention uh, the idea of banning it or charging tax on it, and uh, you'll hear a lot of cries out, uh, cries against that from all sorts of people, nose tilted up and down alike, because people are attracted to things which aren't necessarily healthy or sound of mind, but they'll give it its, their vote nonetheless. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it has merit, and I think so too. The fact that these people judge those that choose not to play the same game. And even though, yeah, they say you can choose, really, if the land is owned and the food is owned, and to an extent the water is owned, you know, everything and everywhere is owned, then it is impossible to really choose to be outside of the system and outside of the game without violating some law, without being on someone else's property, you know, and violating something. You know? So I think the least you could do is be like, all right, well, if I have to live in the shadows and try and survive through the cracks in this system where as a result of me choosing to be separate from this, I am automatically separated from the common man, from all my peers, because it does, it segregates. Then I think being able to take a small percentage of the taxpayer's money is but a small cost and worthy payment for those that are forced via being born into this, never chose to be part of this. And yeah, sure, there's benefits that come along with it. And there's a lot of upsides that one can keep the cameras focused on when they're making the little montages of how great life is, and how great our model of life is. But there's also a lot of realities that people prefer to not point the cameras at and show on your televisions, that people prefer to look away on when they're walking past on the street. Or when they're hearing about, you know, the way that our lifestyle here is affecting those on the other side of the world. And butterfly effect, you know, it has, it, it, it has not made its presence felt any more than it does these days in terms of trading and the exchange of resources and how some, a deal that goes on over here in Australia 
could affect someone in Bangladesh, you know, or Africa or anywhere else. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think these people have a right to judge. I think everyone should respect that everyone's got the choice to the game they choose to play. And I think the, this, this, the amount that one gets paid on Centrelink or any kind of allowance is so minimal. It is enough to survive and maybe have a drink one night and that's it, you know? And if anything, these people just by sitting back and not working, sitting on their asses, are actually contributing more, in my perspective, to society and to the planet and the health and well-being of all its creatures by not participating in the atrocities that we have normalized to the point of calling the way it is. That's just the way it is. A lot of the fucked up shit that goes down the world, they don't contribute to it as much. You know, whereas somebody that might have a FIFO fly and fly out mining job, ripping up the earth and fracking and all of this, who has a heavy pay, paycheck as a result of them being able to compromise on their ethics, they're given a pat on the back and a nod by their fellow man and woman. So really, you know, I think we have to do a lot of uh, exploring as to our own motives and our own values and whether or not the payoffs and what we're receiving and our incentives and our rewards, whether it really justifies the reality that we are facilitating as players playing the game. A game is nothing but a set of rules and a set of objectives, set of perks, all these various things to get the players to play the game. Various incentives or punishments, you know. And whether it's out of fear or whether it's out of trying to entice people and entice a sense of desire that drives them, you know, all these things are set up to have you play the game, but it is still your choice. A game is nothing without its players. The machine is nothing without the life force that it sucks from its cogs turning and twisting to make the machine run without the life source, without the people, without the players. The game is nothing. Nothing. It's just an, an, an empty context with no actual body to it. You know, it's a potential situation. But what, what makes a potential situation a reality is when we actively engage with the rules and we participate in the game and we accept it for being the way it is and a standard. You know, it's gone to the point where we have ritualized the production and the buying and consumption and the burning up of goods, you know as pretty, it's pretty much a daily ritual. God, you could say in many ways, has been replaced by this everlasting desire and need to the point of being greedy, you know, needing more, needing the next best thing. You know, that's, that's what our God is, that's our religion, is consumerism, that's how it's being sold. And it seems, based on the way the game still is, and is becoming furthermore, that people prioritize production and consumption and destruction over everything else. Everything else including the environment and you know the fitness of the world that we live in and the well-being of the people and all things non-people but living nonetheless. So I can't help but hate the player when I look at how the game is because the game could be anything we wanted it to. It could get to a point, you know, where we could say, hey, no, I'm not gonna compromise. And as much as there are conveniences and as much as there are luxuries, which might be painful and, you know, kind of hard to let go. When I look at the overall reward for doing so and the improvements and the benefits on offer, if we were to change the setup as it is now, then it's, it's a no-brainer. So I'm willing to forego all of that crap for the sake of a better world. And what it would take is enough people to say this, and you know what you'd have to do? You wouldn't need to rally. You wouldn't need to get up with your signs and paint yourselves up and go out with your battle cries and you know go complaining to parliament. 
but simply just by taking yourself out of the game, just by stopping the need to play every day, endless slaving array and the charades of freedom. Just by withdrawing your participation, the machine collapses. Once the cogs st stop turning, the machine dies. And even if just a small gesture towards the vision of a new world, just a small step in the right direction, even if you mark one day out of the week, everybody together marks one day out of the week where they don't, you know, go shopping and they don't buy any goods at all, all services, one day a week. And we set a list of demands and changes that we desire to see made, a social reform to the underlining principles which govern our government bodies and the corporate powerhouses which puppet them and which, you know, feed them and promote them and give them their money in their campaigns. Really, it's a corporatocracy we live in. Your government are just the spokespeople. If you look at where they all come from, they're always from oil. They're always a tycoon. And really, it's business before everything else. Maximize profit at the expense of everything else. If you can't see that that's the reality, if you can't see them maximizing their profit at the expense of the quality of your life, at the expense of the world and everything living in it, just for the benefit of them, just for more money, then you either got your head in the sand or you're fucking daft. And you're so far conditioned and lost that you're blind to reality and you're walking in the same roboticized, autonomous steps as your predecessors. Really, things could change. All it takes is a change in vision to start with and then a commitment to it. But really, you gotta realize what matters most for you to do that, you know, and all I'm saying is if you believe that we deserve more, if you believe in a different picture, if you can envision a different picture, and if there are some things you feel strongly about, that you don't agree with on, on any agenda, in any field, then just by withdrawing your participation and making your demands known together, if we were to do this, somebody up there might actually listen. If it starts affecting their profits, imagine, imagine one day a week, one day a week and absolutely nothing gets sold no services no goods imagine the impact and the waves that that would cause even if it did one day a week like this and we kept it up and actually committed not just said oh we're going to do this like some ice bucket novelty oh i gave it a, a shot I, I did a bit of good for the world today it's not just a one-off act Ac one-off actions and events don't achieve nothing Change is a process, and if we're going to change the way things are here, we need to stick it out throughout the process. One day a week, people, withdrawing your participation from playing the game, and you know what? Those that set the rules might start changing the rules because the players aren't playing the game 100% anymore. So far, we're playing the game 150%. Mark it down, mark down your participation and they'll start marking up the benefits for everyone involved, not just themselves. Think about it. Don't play the game, set a bunch of new rules that you would like to see established and mark down the current and existing rules that you would like to see abolished. Set those demands, set the rules for the game you want to vision and then all you need to do is stop playing the old game. You know, at the end of the day, you can't, you, you can't hate the game, but if you hate the game and you keep playing it and the game stays the same, sus, then you have every reason just as equally to hate yourself. If you hate the game and you're playing by its rules to a T, you have just as much reason to hate yourself. If you want to see change, you don't have to let it go all together. I understand you guys are families out there. You need money, you need to keep your jobs. Keep working. Just mark out one day a week and we might actually start seeing the game change and maybe at the end of it we can end up loving the game and all the players that made it possible. There's a thought for you.